What's going on guys? Today on JD Cars, we're gonna be completely trussing and gusseting the Dana 30 front axle on this JKU behind me. As you guys know, Gunner here has our four inch long arm lift kit from Rough Country painted in red. We have the Vertex shocks and we also have some 37 inch Nitto trail grapplers. These things weigh nearly 100 pounds each, just the rubber, so it's over 100 pounds a wheel and tire. And that's a lot of force and a lot of weight to be put on a Dana 30. This is a pretty skinny axle, guys. Actually, I have mine broken down a bit. You can see I don't have my axle shafts in, but this axle is pretty weak, I'm not gonna lie. I'm really surprised how far we've made it <laughs> with 37s. Uh, we definitely pushed the limits, but only for a year or so, and that was, you know, occasional off-roading. But, time to stop torturing this axle. We're gonna be beefing it up today with some bracketry going all the way from this knuckle all the way across the axle. Of course, we're gonna be strengthening the axle tube itself. These points here where our control arms mount to because it's pretty thin and only one weld down there with no gusset. Also going to be strengthening our knuckles and overall just beefing things up. Let's turn to the smaller one here first. This one does have our instructions after all. Oh, look at that. By the way, shout out to Amber S who uh, packaged this unit. Super quick side note, but Rough Country has very good customer service. And look at this bracketry guys. Look at that. This is full of brackets. I'm assuming these are our knuckle gussets. Presumably all of this is for the ends of the axles where the knuckles are, but we'll find out of course. Tearing into our second box here, more instructions. Oh, this is actually our diff guard. So you can purchase this separately from the trust and gusset kit. I don't recall if it's included or not but we've got one here. This is the Rough Country Dana 30 diff cover. It's a nice piece of armor. Looks like all quarter inch steel, very strong. They also do include extended hardware for that diff cover, so you're not just reusing the stock ones and putting in a fastener that's too short. We do have extended bolts. And last but not least, we have the main box itself. And this is the truss that goes in the middle of the axle. We have more thorough instructions for that. So. I do like that each box has its own set of instructions, keeps things really simple and easy to follow. Ah, look at that. Oh, baby. Rough Country logo. That looks sick. I kind of want to paint this, or I don't know if I can spray paint it, but maybe hand paint this truss after. That would look really cool. Two of these brackets. Assuming this goes on top. Two more pieces. I think these are for the short end of the axle tube. Sorry, these guys. And some more miscellaneous brackets. So for 119 bucks, we get everything you see here, minus the Dana 30 diff cover, because they don't know if you have a Dana 30 or Dana 44. So you'll have to select that for your axle. But even then, 119 bucks, and we're getting all of this steel, beautifully laser cut. Look at this stuff. Expertly bent. I don't know how you could ask for more, especially with current rising prices in building materials and steel. I think this is a very good deal. And just to clarify, this is all made of 13 sixteenths and quarter inch steel. Enough talking about this sweet kit. Let's get the axle torn down and get it installed.
Alright, so we've got the front axle completely torn down. Uh, it's stripped down to nothing. The only thing I could take out would be the ball joints for our knuckles and potentially these control arm bushings here, but I'm not too concerned about them. If we fry them, we'll replace them. And conveniently, I actually had to replace my front ring and pinion gear, so I've stripped those out of the gearbox as well. However, you can feel free to leave them as long as you're careful applying heat and you don't completely torch the thing. I think it's fairly obvious what we have to do at this point. We have to take a wire wheel to the entire axle, strip it down, and uh, ideally get it down to bare metal on the top side and all the points that we're gonna be welding to. I'm just gonna go do a thorough job so that we have a nice clean base to paint after we're done. All right, folks, went to town. Actually had to go out and buy a new angle grinder because mine of six years. By the way, huge shout out to Porter Cable. I bought uh, I bought this one over here. April of 2015, I bought this angle grinder for $39.99. Used it a ton, and uh, I'm pretty sure the bearings failed in it because I was using this big heavy wire wheel. But when I grabbed a new one, I also used this little die grinder. So I used a combination of tools. Uh, it's still not perfect, but I'm getting my trussing gusset kit laid out on the axle. You can kind of see here. Um, and I'll try to show you quickly because they don't do a fantastic job in the pictures. It took me a little bit to figure this out. You have two pieces down in the ends. You can see this one here, this piece. The kind of J-hook looking thing drops in, in between your knuckle and the coil spring mount. And then this guy, the larger one, goes on top of that and kind of notches in right there. So we're actually going to have to weld the inner one first. We'll tack it up right here, pull this off, weld it up fully, drop this on, and weld it up. Same deal on the bottom with this bracket here. This goes right there. Yeah, just like that. Now I do want to talk about this guy. This I won't be using because this is an optional piece for the optional Rough Country track bar relocation bracket. I still have my stock one on here. I don't really want to wait for the other one to come in, so we're just gonna keep the stock one. It works just fine. This is the bracket for your stock one. This is for the Rough Country one. And then this piece in the back has that little cutout. We have this angled piece on top. That makes up our passenger side truss. And then for the driver side truss right here, or at the middle one rather, we have five pieces. The two side pieces, of course, that go vertically like this. The top plate. And we also have these guys that notch in like so. Those are going to add even more strength. Pretty sweet. That mounts up really easily. It's pretty self-explanatory. And this setup over here kind of just fits in like puzzle pieces. I already showed you guys the knuckle. It's identical on both sides. And uh, yeah, so hopefully that gives you a good idea of how this truss system works. I think it is really well designed. And I didn't have any fitment issues other than right here. I did have to grind just a little bit, like a hair, uh, off of this J-hook piece to get it to fit. And I think that might be because this knuckle probably got tweaked in a little bit by our 37 inch tires. So good thing that we're getting this kit installed before we do any more major damage. But what I'm gonna do at this point is get all of our bracketry into place and I'll try to find a paint pen if I have one inside. I'll go around and just mark everywhere that these brackets make contact. I'll go back with my grinders once again and make sure that I don't have any rust in those places especially because we do want a nice clean contact for welding. And after that, we're going to take some torches. I have propane torch. I also have the map gas and oxygen torch. It should get the job done for this. We're going to want to heat up the cast parts. So the diff housing is cast and our knuckles are cast, of course. Um, honestly, it's a good idea to preheat anything and everything 
especially when welding with this much heat. We don't want to bend our axle tubes or warp anything. Now that I think about it, I probably should have gotten a welding blanket, but it is pretty warm out. If you're doing this in cold conditions, you probably should get a welding blanket, um, but we can also use our torches to help slow the cooling, make that a more gradual process. Don't want to crack anything. And of course, move in little sections, maybe not more than an inch or two inches max at a time. Uh, just jump around, end of the axle, end of the axle, allowing things to cool. Anyways, I'll see you guys when we're welding. Nope. All right, so <laughs> things are going pretty well actually with this truss and gusset kit. Just got our first welds down. I'm a little rusty, but fairly proud of these. Especially this one right here. These are looking pretty good. But right here and on the other side, I had to do a little bit of gap filling. There's a pretty sizable, at least quarter inch, maybe bigger gap here. So basically had to do spot welds and just weld stop let it cool keep going down um, these sections have matched up well welding to the cast wasn't as scary as i thought haven't cracked anything yet knock on wood but yeah i'm pretty stoked with this i've gone ahead and welded inside in addition to welding the outside just to make it even stronger i'm allowing this to cool down just a little bit before diving into anything else but probably gonna weld this little curve right here at the bottom of this support same thing over here and I'll probably lay a bead in that corner, in that corner, and these ones as well. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep welding away and let you know how this works out. All right, folks, next day, and we've got the entire truss and gusset kit welded up to the axle. Not 100% welded, we still have a few places, like right here, this gap here, here, and then I also do wanna weld in all these little joints and then grind them flat just for maximum strength here. You have to do right here, right here, right here. So just all the top welds, I like to have my welding surface flat if possible. Um, so that's why I've been rotating the axle back and forth so the weld falls into the crack. So I'm just gonna keep at it. We're almost done, almost ready to take the grinder to this, get it all smooth, hit it with the wire wheel again, and make it look pretty with some paint. All right, folks, she's up on jack stands, got the jack stands covered in trash bags, of course. We have our seals, diff case, all sealed up with some masking tape just so we don't get paint in there, obviously. 
and I've taken the wire wheel to it one last time. Just got rid of any other dirt, rust, or slag. It's ready for our first coat of spray paint. I'm going to be doing satin black on the entire axle, and then I, I did get a little can of red paint. This is latex, so I'm a little bit hesitant if that's a good idea to put on an axle. I probably want acrylic, but we're going to give it a shot, see how it goes. And just like that, our axle's all painted up. We even did the custom red uh, that I was talking about earlier. Um, I, I couldn't help myself, I had to. Only doing this once and I figured what the heck. Like I showed you guys earlier, just this little latex paint, but it actually worked out really well. Shouldn't press on this too hard, it's still a little wet, but it worked well. I used a foam brush for most of it and I decided not to try to even masking tape anything because it was too difficult to apply masking tape to the bumpy welds. But I think it came out pretty neat. Matches up with our red anodized collars, which looks great. And I really want to show off the two or three days of hard work and just how beastly this axle is now. I think it's gonna look great with all the other red accents, but you're probably gonna notice I'm missing all of the red control arms. They're over here. I've stripped down the red control arms as well as the rear axle because I want to hit these with some sandpaper, maybe the wire wheel, and give them a coat of paint. I want to do the same to the frame as well and uh, just refresh everything while we're at it. All right, so we're back. We have the front axle actually bolted up. Not entirely, but it's bolted up to the control arms, which is kind of my biggest concern. And I'm glad to say it really doesn't interfere with the control arms at all and it even looks like rough country left us two little cutouts here for our steering stabilizer so we'll be able to reinstall that no problem knock on wood i also just did these red bump stops because i want to replace the old gross rotted out stock ones that just fall apart so made a short little video on that and we're just going to keep reassembling the front end have to do our gearing real quick and uh, we'll be back in action. See you guys when this thing's back down on the ground. So I'm back at school now, finishing up editing this truss and gusset video. And unfortunately, I just realized I lost both the outro for this and the full build recap, which is pretty sad. But I am glad to say the truss and gusset worked out really well. Aside from one minor issue with the steering stabilizer, I had the dual steering stabilizer set up from Rough Country and because of the truss and gusset, I wasn't able to angle the bracket, the center bracket backwards, which complicated things a little bit. I had to modify that bracket to get it to work properly, but it all worked out in the end and it did feel like it stiffened up the front axle and stiffened up the front end. So all in all, great project. It was fun, pretty inexpensive and uh, looks great as well try to overlay some photos here of what the final product looked like. But I'm gonna wrap things up. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time on JD Cars.